Introducing the Listener Support Program, feeling the future and quality of House of Barf. Dear loyal listeners, at the House of Barf, we strive to bring you the most engaging, informative, and entertaining content every day into the world of business, accounting, regulation, and finance. We strive to provide you with expert knowledge, practical tips, and thought-provoking discussions to help you excel in your financial endeavors. We are dedicated to fostering meaningful conversations, sharing valuable insights, and creating a community of like-minded individuals who are passionate about business, accounting, regulation, and finance. Producing high-quality content requires dedication, resources, and effort from a talented team of one, me, but in the future, you know, hopefully I'll have a team. That's why we are excited to introduce our listener support program. This initiative allows you, our cherished audience members, to play a pivotal role in shaping the future and the content and assuring House of Bar's sustainability. In the future, becoming a supporter, you will be able to enjoy a range of exclusive benefits. Benefits that I'm hoping to be able to bring eventually, early access to episodes, um, access to episodes that are not, you know, public, uh, you know, that are not accessible to everyone, possibly even um, create better content. And then all those mistakes I make, maybe I'll put them in a separate episode. You'll be able to get some behind the scenes stuff um, uh, and other uh, exclusive um, um, things such as merchandise. Possibly I have, uh, you know, a children's book coming out, maybe able to offer that. Uh, your support goes directly towards enhancing the quality of our content, expanding our reach, our research, and investing in new resources and technology to bring you even better experiences. Your contribution will help us continue to deliver thought-provoking discussions, captivating stories, and insightful inter... Oh, no, sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Um, may, in the future, may possibly interview someone uh that will keep you engaged and inspired join me us in shaping the future of house of barf by becoming a supporter today your generosity empowers us to keep our conversations alive and ensures that we can contribute to provide valuable content to audiences around the united states and hopefully in the future of the world to support us simply visit podcasters.spotify.com then you can get to House of Barf. Um, also, it is on Spotify. And um, support this podcast and become a supporter. And choose a membership tier that aligns with your preferences. Every contribution, no matter how small or how big, makes a meaningful impact and is deeply appreciated. Thank you for being an essential part of our journey. With your support, we can reach new heights and create content that truly resonates with you, our incredible listeners. God bless. Happy listening. I'm Chan Man. This is House of Barf. Again, if you would like, you can visit podcasters.spotify.com backslash pod backslash show backslash Chan hyphen man seven. And you can go to support this podcast. And become a supporter today. Thank you. You can also reach me at c287gph at gmail.com. Thank you again. You have a wonderful day. God bless. Yo, yo, yo. What's good? It's Friday. What's poppin', man? It's Chan Man House of Barf just in this joint listening to this Bloomberg radio. Uh, heard Pfizer maybe up 6% today. Looks. We're talking about the Biden administration uh, as well in terms of the Israeli Hamas war. Tech Talk, Charlie Hernandez, CEO of My Pocket Lawyer, joins to discuss how AI can be used for a profit tool to expand access to legal services and serve as a benefit to the legal industry. And then we're also going to check in with Megan Horniman. She's the chief investment officer at Verdant Capital Advisors to get her market call. So a lot happening. Man, what's crazy is the lawyer position, I never would have thought in my day I would see it. Like, I thought, I mean, 
wow, the, the lawyer is losing its position to AI. Everybody's losing to AI. Like, uh, to be honest, I really think I lost my job to AI. And um, what's the name? I'm starting to figure out. Uh, I was talking to one of my my boys, and they were telling me how, um, you know what I'm saying? They're using AI instead of, like, I bought a book on it. Well, I've been had the book, but I got a book on Excel functions. He's like, man, you don't even got to read that book, dog. Like, just go to chat GBT, GPT, and whatever function you're trying to figure out, like, how do I calculate this? Just ask chat GPT, and it'll tell you the function. Matter of fact, it may even put an Excel sheet together or something. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, no, nah, this, this ain't, I mean, I was just, that's, that's not the first time I heard about, um, someone using AI as their lawyer, you know, and then it also sounded, they said they're using it as a profit making tool, which we all are familiar with the, uh, the new way of investing, which is going to be, you know, the robo advising and creating an algorithm to, uh, invest crazy thing. I was listening to, I forgot who I was listening to, you know, there's always this, well, you know, blah, 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 it's not good for you, whatever, but they're talking about robo advising may not be, you know, the best thing, uh, considering that, I mean, you tell the robot to make me profits. Um, that's my bad about that. Uh, my bad. Uh, that's that's exactly what it's going to do, you know. And you say, well, that's what I wanted to do, but we don't know what parameters uh, were set. So if your parameters weren't set, I guess like properly, then um, it's very possible that it 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 would just do what it do to make you profitable so it's it's and and we want a market we don't want to shut the market down and that's very possible it could happen it's like make me profitable and the whole market just shuts down like oh damn well i'm profitable and well, yeah but there's no more market you know you're the only person left you know <laughs> you can't trade with yourself you know um so i mean that'd be that's i guess technically manipulation if you were just trading by yourself but uh yeah so that's just uh some but i have been um looking at a few things i'm looking at boeing uh probably short puts on boeing uh the thing about boeing is is it like like time frames you know time frames get you because you're like all right i want to trade boeing and i'm ready i want i want to get into these dividends with boeing and i want to get in now um but I mean, is it too early? If if the short puts are making money, do I take the gains? You know, what what should what, what should I do? You know what I'm saying? So that's just a few things to think about. Uh, Cause we're still not sure. I mean, supposedly they're going to bring back um, dividends in 2025, but there's no guarantee. And no offense. I mean, I'm not saying that Boeing's. You know, I'm I'm not trying to throw no smut on this name or anything, but I wouldn't consider Boeing one of the most uh, ethical, uh, considering the last few years of things that were going on, I was kind of watching a special on the black box and, uh, uh, plane crash. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff, even companies like GM, supposedly, uh, they even had things of like bolts that they were using in the car. So they had like $10 bolts and then they decided that they're like, Hey, you know, we don't need to keep using these $10 bolts. We can use $3 bolts. Well, kind of find out those $3 bolts sent a bunch of cars, um, you know, tumbling. Uh, so there's just a few things. So taking a look at Boeing. Uh, and besides that, I kind of feel like Boeing is a company that ain't going nowhere. You know, um, they seem to be undefeated. You know, so um, that's taking a look at Boeing. Uh, there is this whole uh, diet thing everybody's on right now. Uh, Biofarm. Um, just basically just like, um, I guess it's weight loss drugs. Oh, and you know, the weight loss drugs freak me out, man. Uh, crazy story. Uh, I had a home girl who I don't, I don't know who, where, why, when, how, but she had affiliates, I guess in some black market, um, like where they sell like spices and herbs and stuff. 
And uh, she used to go and get her weight loss drugs. I don't even know where this black market was. Like, I don't even know where she would go. But, uh, she, yeah, she had some connections on this black market. I don't even know. Dead ass. I, I don't even talk to her anymore. Um, but she would go get these weight loss drugs. She was, um, I hate to say this, but uh, she was of a um, Asian descent. And I guess Asian people are very particular on being skinny. Uh, and, and so she took her skinniness very serious. You know, she had to stay below a certain weight, you know. And uh, if she ever got a little heavy. And, oh, and she used to love soul food. I mean, like uh, like uh, Southern American cuisine. You know, fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, uh, dressing, you know, stuffing, whatever. She loved that food. You know what I'm saying? And... Um, so, so in eating that food, she wanted to make sure she kept her weight down. So she would take these weight loss drugs. I don't even know what was in them. So, you know, one day I'm kind of like, yo, can I take a few of your pills? She was like, yeah, sure. I'll give you like, you know, 30 of them or something. Take one a day. I said, you know, I'm, I'm chilling. I think I go to the basketball court and everybody's like, damn, Jen, you're looking skinny, dog. And I'm like, are you serious? They're like, what you doing? I was like, yo, I haven't done shit. And then I was like, oh, shit, I've been taking those, those weight loss drugs. And what concerns me is because, you know, what happens, you know, I'm pretty sure they study the side effects, but I think there's some companies, I think Eli Lilly, which I, I would love to start selling short puts on Eli Lilly, but they're expensive. Um, I, um, I, um, think they're saying that, yo, you got to be a diabetic basically to get this, this pill. You know what I'm saying? Like they can't just, you know can't just be given out to anybody and everybody's just gonna go around and we don't know what's gonna do to the bones to the body the the what side effects could possibly happen uh other things taking a look at nvidia nvidia is falling back uh so if i have the opportunity the eligibility and whatnot which i don't have any eligibility i'm broke as fuck but um probably short calls on it saying it's not gonna go above this price uh this is not advice this is just education this is just entertainment uh please do not listen to me i'm broke um, trust me, uh, don't pay me no mind. Um, uh, taking a look at, uh, probably going to take a look at AMC and GM. No, no. Is it GM? Uh, yeah, I think General Motors. I think they're going to be giving out a big dividend. Uh, also taking a look at AMC. I don't know. They seem to be at like an all time low or something. Um, I'm going to take a look at that. It was, um, uh, it was this guy I listened to. His name is uh, Invest with Henry, uh, Uncle Henry. Uh, he was talking on AMC, so I'm going to take a look at that as well. Um, oh, how could I forget? I opened up a Forex account. Um, so currently, uh, the broker that I decided to use was Awanda. Uh, they, I'm, I'm eligible. Uh, I don't have to put anything in the account but like $100. I'm good to go. Uh, that's how I'm gonna start off. I got a demo account or how I would say a simulated account or whatever it's called. Um, been getting some trades in. This shit is hard. It's, this shit is hard. This Forex shit is hard, but I'm taking my time. I'm learning it. I'm getting to understand it. I'm having fun. Um, so that's something I'm, so I finally got the Forex account open. If I could, I would have an applause sound go off right now. Cause it's like, yes. So we got the, the, we got the equities, U.S. equities market. We got the uh, derivatives, the options going. We're going to get the Forex going. My cryptocurrency account is shut down now. Nothing bad happened. Just had to liquidate it considering the fact that I wasn't really trading in the account. Um, it was just I was putting cash in, you know, I was using the big three, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, XRP Ripple. And I was just putting it in there. I wasn't trading it. I got bills to pay. I got so much shit going on. I just got it. Oh gosh, all these bills keep coming in. And right now I'm unemployed. Um, so it's just tough as fuck. Uh, if I could say shout out to the U.S. government right now because they actually sent me some money and I got to finish up an application for health care. Um, the U.S. government is helping me out. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be damn near. I'll be damn sure to get back to the U.S. government when I get right. Uh, I'll probably invest in treasury bonds. Or something. I'm going to figure something out to get back to the U.S. government. Because I appreciate it, man. This, I mean, it's just so nice to be able to just, like, go to the grocery store and, like, purchase something. You know? Like, actually, you know what I'm saying? Purchase something. Like, kids be like, hey, can we get some Prime? 
And you know, you'd be like, throw it in the bag. You know, like, go ahead. We matter of fact, grab two. One one for your sibling. You know, <laughs> like, you know, and it feels so good, man. You know, so for a while, I mean, it was I wasn't able to do shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh so yeah, working on that. Uh still working on the businesses, um, not getting paid, you know what I'm saying? I know everybody be like, oh, you're just this fantastic trader. You should be getting paid. Nah, nah, not getting paid. Nobody pays me. And you know what? I don't even be asking for no money because I don't want any issues. You know what I'm saying? People be like, oh, this guy's out here giving advice. No, I'm not. No guidance, no advice, no nothing. I sit there. I coach. We do therapy. And uh, hopefully soon we'll be doing some community outreach programs. I was recently just thinking about a community outreach program that I wanted to do. And I totally forgot. It was something like a crap. I was just thinking of, I should have wrote it down. I was like, oh, that'd be great for a classroom. Oh, I totally forgot. But we're going to figure it out. Um, I do got to get, I, I got to get ready to step real quick. I'm going to see if I can hop back on and just tell y'all what I'm working on. Uh, but before y'all go, I want to uh, thank God first. You know, God woke me up this morning to give me the opportunity to be up here uh, podcasting, having this conversation with y'all and trading and everything. I want to thank y'all for supporting me. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Y'all have been the best. Uh considering the fact that i ain't got no video i ain't really putting out no trades nothing i'm just hopping on this mic and talking uh so i just want to say thank y'all for supporting me and i'm really just going to keep it audio um for a couple of different reasons i tell you i'll try to keep this transparent one reason is one i'm broke i don't even have the technology for um for podcasting on youtube or anything but two i hear audio when people finally start listening to you actually has a bigger impact on their psyche than it does visual visual for some reason doesn't sink into the head as well or as as much but if somebody is willing to sit there and listen to you talk and typically my podcasts are an hour plus then like you're sinking into their psyche and they're more likely to support you so and again i'm just putting this all that's business psychology but i'm just putting this all out there not to sound like some genius or anything it's just because one day, who knows? I don't know if you ever seen the movie Nine. I like the movie. I think it's a Tim Burton film. I can't remember who it is. Is it, or is it that one dude? The uh, he did uh, that plant movie, Shyamalan. I can't remember who it is, but um, yeah, um, the movie Nine, where essentially, who knows? My consciousness, not saying unconsciousness, but this information could land in the hands of an individual. Who may not have the opportunity to have the environment or the genetics, whatever it is, to to think about business, to think about trading or anything. And I'm not the most patient motherfucker. I've been I was sitting there kind of doing a coaching slash session with somebody and it, it was a test from God. I mean, I'm dead ass serious. It was a test from God. If I could say this real quick, men, y'all need to chill the fuck out out i don't know what it is about men and when they get around talking about business and finance and everything it turns into a shit fest everybody wants to be the most knowledgeable everybody wants to talk about this that man a lot of these traders out here are really just i don't know what you call it men sitting around chatting not even trading oh let me try to put this trade in oh i lost money i'm getting out you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm making a bunch of money. Let me hold it. Let me hold it. No stop. No no hedge. No lim- limit order. Nothing. It's like, oh, it's falling. It's falling. Oh, now I'm losing money. Sell. I'm getting out the position. This is another thing is, before we started trading, I remember I was talking to one of the guys, and I was like, hey, don't get in the habit of buying in the green and selling in the red. Oh, oh, that's so amateur. That's so amateur. I, I don't do that. I don't do that anymore. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let's trade. Let's trade. I'm, I'm working on my stuff over here. I'll just sit here. And if you have some things you want to, you know, you know, th- you know, bounce off me, I'm right here. Right. They say, no. Oh, man, I just lost 70 bucks. Oh, for real? Oh, it's OK. It's all good. Uh, no, nah, I was actually just up 500, 600 dollars. Damn. Why did you take it? Uh, I don't know. I just was, I don't know. I just, it didn't hit my, it didn't hit my tech profit, man. You should have lowered that take profit, man. Just take the money, take the profit. 
but nobody ever wants to listen. This is another reason why I do this. Is because it's kind of therapy for me to get this shit off my chest. And another thing is this may actually resonate with somebody. It's almost to an extent, forget the people around me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm global right now. I'm not saying I'm not that big global. But I'm at least in three to six different countries. Here, real quick. I got to get ready to step real quick. I'll be back. Thank you so much to anybody and everybody who decided to take time out of their wonderful Friday to come kick it with me. I appreciate it. I'm Chad, man. This is House of Barf. Blah! I am thrilled to introduce you to an exciting new storybook journey that I believe will capture your imagination. Allow me to present Langston Mangston's Cool Maid Stand Adventure, a compelling short story that promises to transport you to a world of interest, excitement, and learning. The title of the book is Langston Mangston's Cool Maid Stand Adventure by Chandler Hayes. In a world of colorful imagination and captivating stories, a new children's book has emerged to empower our young minds with crucial life lessons, life skills, and financial literacy. Langston Mason's Cool Maid Stand Adventure is a cheering short story written by a talented black author who understands the importance of equipping our youth in the early stages of life with the tools they need to navigate the realm of money, savings, and smart choices. Meet Langston Mingston and his imaginary best friend, Zonky, a pink elephant, two curious souls who embark on an adventure around the vibrant landscape of Wichita, Kansas, where Langston Mingston sets out to accomplish multiple goals and is met with obstacles that he must overcome. Langston Mingston and Zonky discover valuable lessons of talking about finances in the home in order to gain knowledge. Langston Mangston, with a little bit of confidence, the guidance of supportive parents, the help of community members like Mr. Tiller, and his imaginary best friend, Zonky, Langston Mangston learns about the value of money and how to save, the importance of making thoughtful spending decisions, the significance of thinking outside the box when met with challenges, with money, and the joys of sharing with others. Through relatable experiences and emerging and, and engaging storytelling, Young readers are introduced to the fundamental concepts of money, such as earning, saving, and spending responsibly. Langston Mangston set savings goals, teaching children the importance of planning for future needs and dreams. The book celebrates diversity and the different perspectives on money, shedding light on its role in different people's lives. The characters' interactions emphasize the joys of serving others, the gift of sharing, and making a positive impact in their community. The pages of Langston Mangston's Cool Maid Stand Adventure come to life with vibrant illustrations. The colorful and imaginative visuals not only captivate young readers, but also enhance their understanding of complex financial concepts. Langston Mangston's Cool Maid Stand Adventure is coming soon to bookstairs and online realtors it is a must-have addition to any child's library, fostering essential life skills while sparking the joy of reading. Empower the young minds in your life with the gift of financial literacy and imagination. Join Langston Mangston, Zonky, family, and friends on their extraordinary journey of running a drink stand to set them on the path of a brighter future. Your opinion means a great deal to me. I would be honored if you would consider exploring Lynx and Minkson's Cool and Stand Adventure and sharing your thoughts. Your feedback could play an invaluable role in shaping the future of this project. If you have any questions, comments, or would like to discuss the book further, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Your support in spreading the word about Lynx and Minkson's Cool and Stand Adventure would mean the world to me, and I deeply appreciate your consideration. I am a passionate advocate for financial literacy me um, Chandler Hayes um, and and am excited to join the community of storytellers with a background in finances I am driven to inspire children to embark on their own adventures of learning and discovery through the power of literature Langston Mangston's Cool and Maze Stand Adventure is a heartfelt endeavor to promote financial literacy in a fun and accessible way. As a black author, I'm committed to providing children of all backgrounds 
with the tools for success, and I am proud to contribute to a more financially informed generation. Thank you for taking the time to explore this advertisement, and I look forward to the possibility of sharing this extraordinary literature adventure with you. Please feel free to contact me. Uh, You can reach me at the email c287gph at gmail.com. All right. Thank you. Warmest regards. Have a great day. God bless.